Hey, what's up? I'm Brian Martinez. Thank you for joining me. So if you haven't seen some of my other videos on the DM4800, this is going to be a new 2024 update. I'm really excited to kind of show you guys everything. We're going to go into the drivers, where to get them, where to place them on your computer, and some more general functions on the DM to kind of get yourself going. It's been a couple of years since I've had this console, and I'm really excited to kind of show you guys everything that you can do with it and some of the fun features of it and really unique features of it. So stay tuned. Okay, to answer the first question of the hookups, so on the back of the DM4800, there's a FireWire uh, 400 connector. And so the first thing we have to do is go to 400 to 800 connector. And once we have that 400 to 800 connector, I have another, and it's just, just a one wire off of Amazon. I'll have a link for that in the description below. Um, and then I have two individual Mac connectors. One's a FireWire 400 to Thunderbolt 2, and the other one is a Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 3. Um, whenever I was looking up the links for these, the Thunderbolt 2 one was like almost impossible to find. I couldn't find it anywhere. Um, so I did notice, though, that there are newer adapters that just goes from the the Thunderbolt 2 straight into the USB-C. I don't have that set up, so I can't say for sure if that will work, but it possibly could. So like I said, my current setup is the uh, 800 to Thunderbolt 2 and then Thunderbolt 2 to USB-C or the Thunderbolt 3, basically the same thing. Uh, that's kind of the two big things that will get you started you know also making sure that you do have the sound card for the dm4800 those are removable so you could potentially have one that doesn't have a sound card so look on the back you'll see it in there it has the midi interface and then also the uh, the spot to plug in your firewire uh, cable so the next thing i want to talk about is one of the problems that i had a couple months ago uh i've had Okay, let me back up. I've had the same computer since 2020, and that was whenever I made that first video, was with that computer, and I was running Catalina OS, uh, and it was an i7 MacBook Pro, and uh, some other kind of specs. Either which way, it was an older computer, and, I, and it was working great. I've used it for a long time. Well, I had battery issues, and the computer went down, and I was faced with a huge dilemma with the 4800 of, so do I just disregard it? Because, you know, in the Tascam forums and on Gearspace, there's all kinds of information out there on, will it work with this? Will it work with that? So on and so forth. And I, I really considered, you know, completely changing my setup to where I didn't even have the DM anymore. And I was just going to go from ground one. But the DM has so much functionality that I use constantly in the studio that I was like, okay, no, I need to keep this. And so I kind of took a slight gamble uh, because I needed a new computer. Uh, I kind of knew for sure that the M1 stuff was really unknown. We didn't know if any of the new Apple Silicon processors were actually going to work. So I went with the newest Intel processor, and that's the i9. And I got one, a MacBook that basically is running the newest version of OS. And I'm on 14.6.1 uh, is the current OS that I am on. Uh, and it it's running fine. After I installed the drivers, it's, it's working like a champ. So I've not had any problems, which is a good thing. Honestly, it's a really good thing. Um, I do think that I will eventually get to the point where I can't use this as an interface anymore. I'll either have to get uh, outputs or I'll have to take the outs from this board into an interface uh, or use the inserts or I, I don't know. I haven't really figured that out if I keep this keep going this route. I mean, there's, there's definitely expandability using the AES for it to just go directly into a different interface. So the next thing I want to talk about is where to actually get the download for this. Um, I kind of stumbled upon it. You know, we can go super deep into the forms. I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to have a direct link to the download for this 
and I'm also going to walk you guys through it on my computer. So here we go. Okay, so I've already opened the link here um, for you guys, but basically uh, on the Tascam Forms website, there's this guy Marvel who has posted the drive link. I would recommend you going and actually copying that drive link and putting it into your computer and saving it because I don't know how long this will be here. Uh, he posted this in 2018. So, you know, it's been a hot minute, but if something ever happens, I mean, I don't really know, I would suggest that you save this. And that's what I did. So I still want to give him credit because this is where it came from. I still want to use his original file instead of putting my own up there and saying, hey, I have everything. Um, so the link for this actual page will be in the description. We'll open this link up. And here is his Google Drive. And he has the firmware updater, the installer, the readme text, software guide, the companion, and so on and so forth. So I will say the companion does not work. You can download it, put it on there, but it's not going to work. So that's one thing that um, we don't have anymore is the companion for the DM. Uh, the software guide still does work, uh, but the first thing we want to open up is this readme. And basically, he kind of walks us through um, the TM companion, is remixer, uh, is ready for 1.1. The software driver is to make the Mac talk to the FireWire card. So he just kind of talks a little bit about install update your mixer firmware, um, so on and so forth. So I did not do that because I don't have companion. So I'm just running the software that I actually have on my Mac. So let me look at, well, you guys can't see it here, but, uh, Utility system. Um, I'm running uh, 1.5 version for my mixer. So it's not the most up to date one, but it is the one it is the one that I'm currently. So anyway, that's how you would update the mixer if the companion was working. It does not work on, I think it's because it's not a 64-bit plug-in anymore. It's on like a, a 32. So that's kind of one of the problems. You may have a workaround for that, so on and so forth. Um, so that's the um, installer here. And then we also have this zip file um, that's going to have... We don't need that stuff. So download anyway. Download all of this. Uh, you're gonna want to download this uh, IFFWD Mark installer here. This is the one that you want. Um, this is the one that you'll actually run on your computer. Um, not this one. You can download all of this stuff here. Um, let's see. I want to actually open this. Give it a second here. And we will take a, a peek at this. And you can kind of see what this PDF is. Just some technical information. Um, yeah, you don't actually need this here because I don't, I don't have that. So don't worry about that. Um, this is the one that you want. So once you've installed that, you'll run through the process um, I can go ahead and run it, just really walking you guys through this entire thing. I already have it on here, so I'm not going to go through the entire process, but it talks about the driver, the readme text, the license. Uh, yeah, I agree. So it's going to tell you where it takes it up at and so on and so forth. I'm not going to do that last part. Um, and that'll get you where you need to go. The next thing that I suggest you do is after you've done that, 
after you've done that, come back and um, we're going to check the file to make sure it actually is. So the extension should be in your Mac or your hard drive. Go to your library, go to extensions, and it should be in there. So I'll walk you through that real fast too. So we're going to go to Finder. Actually, I'm going to go to Go and Computer, Macintosh, Library. I'm going to find extensions. And so there it is right there. So that's the one that you need to make sure you have. I have it on there. Um, that's the key. Uh, the next thing that's left to do is to, to plug everything in. Um, I suggest having the mixer off when you plug everything in. And I also suggest the first time not having anything plugged into your computer, but the one cable that goes from the DM to your computer. Plug that in, power on your DM, and then go to your screen here. So you want to come here to the alt, and then we're going to digital, slot one and two. I just pushed that little button down there. Let's push this button here. So from format to slot one and two, you want to make sure it says locked, and mine does. So that's kind of how you know you're good. So basically, once you've confirmed it says locked, you're good to go. Um, that is kind of the run through of getting it installed on your computer and basically being able to ensure that it runs. Um, that has worked for me. Then I plug everything else in, you're good to go, and just don't don't let that cable unplug. Um, there's been times where you know I'll have to restart the computer and so on and so forth, but I'm not gonna lie, I was sweating bullets whenever I first downloaded everything because I didn't know if it was gonna work, and it did. Uh, it did for me, and I hope it works for you as well. So basically, um, I just kind of wanted to go over a couple of things with the routing here. Um, and really what I want to say is that go, in, go into the manual and uh, go into the manual and really dive into how everything functions and works. Like it's very, very extensive. It's very, very detailed and this is grassroots it's not intuitive but the functionality is really huge and i would encourage you to print that manual off and anytime you have questions just do a control find and try and search what your problem is and how to solve it so for the most part when i use this mixer i use it for two things uh, for mixing for recording and I also use it, or three things I should say, use it for mixing, I use it for recording, and I also use it for uh, uh, monitor sends, basically, for whenever I'm tracking. And the functionality is great on this, but using the buses, being able to route the buses to an output, uh, all of that is just really handy, uh, is really useful also being able to bring your inputs and route them back out so like if you need to uh, copy something from the internet let's say if someone sends you a song and you're going to use it as a reference track you can just print that reference track just by ha hitting the um, output select to 9 and 10 and then you record off of the uh, outputs 9 and 10 or the inputs of 9 and 10 for the slots and it it's seamless and it works really, really good. Um, the the preamp sound really good. The uh, the talkback mic is super handy, and you can just do a lot with this. I mean, obviously, I'm recording this right now on this board, so it's really, really functional, really handy, and overall, if you get a chance, like I did, and get and are able to get this board. Uh, jump on it you know uh, there are better options out there but you know if if the things are right and it looks good and you have the opportunity jump on it I would I would definitely not say not to do it uh, because you can definitely do a lot of cool and fun things with this and it looks really good sounds really good I have lots of pros to it the, the downside is is that <clears throat> it's huge there's a lot of times that I really wish I didn't have such a big board. 
I wish I had something, you know, kind of smaller, uh, something more feasible. Uh, this pretty much stays here in the studio at all times and doesn't go anywhere um, because it's so large. You know, it's probably uh, two and a half feet by two and a half feet. I mean, it's pretty big and uh, it's not mobile. Uh, I don't think there's racks made for them or cases made for them anymore. Uh, I was lucky enough to, when I got this unit, it came with the desk. So that was really nice to have the desk already fitted for this. Uh, but there's definitely, <clears throat> it could definitely be a challenge being mobile. Um, so I have a whole separate rig that I use for mobile recordings. And then this is basically my mixing and my um, recording interface. So I don't often use the, you can, but I don't really ever use the playback to mix on. So basically, you can you can flip the inputs to where um, the output from the computer is the input one on the board, and so you could physically mix all of your tracks. Um, so yeah, you can you can flip the where the inputs are the outputs and <clears throat> and mix that way. I don't because I have the option of coming down here where uh, I'm at the the remote layer which is all down right now because I don't have anything in the remote layer but basically this is just a copy of my faders in Pro Tools and then I can mix my faders here in Pro Tools so I'm still mixing in the box but I at least am able to it's just a little more convenient I shouldn't say I'm at least uh, I can at least just keep everything in the box and more convenient wise I don't have to worry about the routing and the outputs and so on and so forth so that's kind of my my 2024 update uh, if you guys have more questions I'll try and answer them when they come across and thank you so much for sitting through this and if you guys have if you guys want to see anything else like my mobile rig or maybe just what the studio looks like or kind of some other things uh, let me know. You know, I'm trying to do more YouTube stuff, so I'm really excited to keep doing this and tell me what you think.